Now, for people who really love their traditional 4x4, they know there are only five cars that are properly up to the job. That's the Mercedes G-Class, the Suzuki Jimny, the Toyota Land Cruiser, the Land Rover Defender, and this, the Jeep Wrangler. In this review, I'll be showing you what makes it such an icon, seeing how cool it is, and telling you everything you need to know. But before all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, switch on those notifications, and follow me and Car Buyer on Twitter and Instagram. Now, you don't need me to tell you the whole Jeep story, but one of the reasons why people buy these things is that it has a history dated back to 1941 and is the godfather of off-roaders. This new one may look the same as the old one and the one before that, but it is totally new. Like the Wrangler has always managed, it's imperious off-road, but unlike Wranglers of old, it can actually travel on the road without giving you a headache. Like the Mercedes G-Class, the Wrangler prioritises retro design and off-road prowess above things like refinement and comfort. I mean, take a look at that front bumper. It's as fat as Mick Jagger's bottom lip. And this Wrangler is the posh one. For an idea of just how mad the Wrangler can be, click the banner in the corner to see Ginny's review of the tough Rubicon model. One of the coolest things about the new Wrangler is the ability to remove parts of the bodywork. So if you've got a spare 10 minutes and you're pretty handy with a set of spanners, you can turn your Wrangler from this to this. Yup, that's the roof and the doors off and the windscreen folded down. And you can do it with a small toolkit that comes with the car. Having the doors off and the windscreen down is not convenient for review. So with the beauty of editing, let's put the car back together. Now the interior of the Wrangler is absolutely covered with lovely little thoughtful and retro design details. Jeep likes to call them Easter eggs, but I'm not going to be using that because that's a little bit tacky. But you do notice them and it's just great and it just puts a little smile on your face. Like the, the old Willys Jeep is on top of the gear lever. It's also down in the bottom of the windscreen as well. And when you switch this car on, the little TFT screen in front of you, there's a picture of the front of the Willys Jeep and it morphs into the brand new Wrangler. Really very nice indeed. Now the design is very retro as well. This very slab fronted upright dashboard is very sort of vintage indeed and the steering wheel references the old Jeep CJ which is the first Jeep post-war CJ civilian Jeep. Really nice indeed and it feels great as well. Nice and chunky, nice use of leather as well. And one thing that really strikes you about the Wrangler in here is the fact that the build quality is really very good. Now, the previous Wrangler wasn't particularly well made, but in here, everything feels really good. Nice leather top dashboard, really nice squidgy plastics. Yeah, there are a few cheap plastics further down and some of the switch gear is shared with other Jeeps and other Fiat Chrysler products, but it doesn't really matter. It feels really nicely put together in here. Now storage wise, well, there's quite a lot of it actually. Two big cup holders, there's a space down there. On this particular car we've got a USB-C and a USB charging port. Little door pockets in, little nets which is quite old fashioned. The glove box isn't the biggest but it's not too bad. And then under here it's two level and if you reveal the top level there's also the toolkit to take all the doors and the windscreen off and that just sits in there. Now, every single Jeep comes with this large touch screen. It's nothing old fashioned about it whatsoever. Really simple and easy to use. One thing I particularly like about it uh, in the Wrangler is when you go to the nav and you've got the view map, look, a little Wrangler. Again, really nice design details in here. Now, depending upon which Wrangler you go for, really does determine the type of dashboard and interior ambience that you get. So this is the Sahara, the entry level car. Don't be fooled by these seats. They're optional extra on this press car. Um, but every single Wrangler, of course, comes with permanent four-wheel drive. And you've got this nice lever here so you can switch between two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low, etc., etc. If you go for the Rubicon, you don't get this little cubby here. Instead, you get a panel covering that up and you've got a bank of aux in sockets so you can attach different accessories. And you also get the ability to switch on and off the diffs and disconnect the sway bar. But you can see all of that in Ginny's review of the Rubicon if you click in the top right-hand corner.
There are four flavours of Wrangler. There's the basic sport with a soft top roof, a 7 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, rear parking sensors and a reversing camera. Sahara, like this car, gets a larger touchscreen, LED headlights, a body coloured hard top and posh 18 inch alloys, while Overland adds leather seats. Rubicon tops the range and adds some extra off-roading features like 32-inch mud-terrain tyres, a sway bar you can disconnect, and front and rear electric locking differentials. Now, if you go for the Wrangler two-door and you actually expect to carry people in the back, prepare them to be a little bit um, moany, because when you actually open the door and fold down the seat, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the space you've got to get into. Here goes. Ah, there we are. Ah, it's not the most graceful, I can tell you. But once you actually fold the seat back into its rightful place, you've actually got a decent amount of space here. Yes, my knees are brushing up against the back of the seat, but all I need to do is ask the person in front to move their seat forward a little bit. Once you're back here, it's fine. This rear seat is very comfortable indeed. There's isofix points as well. Down here, you've got uh, ventilation controls, obviously. Um, you've got uh, two USB-C charging ports, two usual USB charging ports as well. There's even a 230 volt three pin socket as well. Two massive cup holders, good visibility out. And of course, if you take this off, you've got a four seater convertible, which is really cool, isn't it? But of course, if you need more space, you do go for the four door Wrangler. But it's not quite as cool as this though, is it? Right, let's get back out again. And then round at the boot, you'll find that the Wrangler's tailgate actually opens on the correct side for the UK, which is pretty unusual. Lift up the glass and there we are. That is the boot room. Not massive, is it? But it's very easy to fold these seats down. Fold, first, fold the headrests and then click that down, lift it up and there we are. Obviously you can't carry any rear seat passengers, but that's a compromise after all, isn't it? You've actually got a decent size boot there. Nice little touches as well, little 12 volt socket under here. There are the places for the door hinges, for the roof, the windscreen, etc., etc. There's a woofer, subwoofer there. It's uh, weather protected. One thing I did want to mention is this door here, because you may think that that's just a nice little pattern, just references the grill, doesn't it? But oh no, Jeep can sell you a whole load of packages and packs which you can attach to there. My favourite is the picnic table. Really very nice indeed. This car is all about heritage, as we know. Nice little plaque there that says about the wading depth, the departure angles, etc. Another thing I wanted to mention is this high level brake light. Now, you may be thinking, you may be buying a Wrangler and wanting to put massive wheels on it, but if you do that, you're not going to detach it to here, are you? But Jeep have thought of that. This, if you undo a few of the bolts there, you can actually lift this up and you can attach a larger wheel on there. And one other thing I wanted to mention, which is a really neat idea on this Wrangler, is when you actually close it, you'll see there is a parking camera there and Jeep have cleverly put it through the wheel there because when you actually back this car up, you get a proper image of where the back of the car is, including the spare wheel. On the Mercedes G-Class, they don't do that. So they run the risk of constantly clattering into your spare wheel. Really neat and simple idea there. Now under the bonnet, it's all very simple. For now, there's just a two litre petrol and a 2.2 litre diesel. And we've got the two litre petrol here and it's pretty much the same engine you find in the Alfa Romeo Giulia Veloce. Although here we've got slightly less power and the torque comes in a little bit earlier. So it helps with off-road driving. And I mean, it's a nice engine. It's relatively smooth. It picks up pretty quickly. And thanks in part to this pretty smooth and pretty quick shifting eight speed automatic gearbox. But I don't know, I just feel as though the old Wrangler with its V6 petrol was far more characterful. And if you've got a Wrangler with a V6 or even a V8 engine under the bonnet, it's, a, it's far more in keeping. A two litre petrol, no matter how good it is, doesn't feel quite right. It's not particularly economical, this engine, either. We've been getting between 22 and 27 miles to the gallon. And so for that reason, I can only really recommend the diesel. 
not only to get better fuel economy, but if you intend to take this car seriously off-road, the diesel, what with its better torque delivery, is better suited to this car. Now, if you step out of this car from a Nissan Qashqai or any other raised hatchback-based SUV, then you're gonna absolutely loathe this car. You're gonna hate how you turn into a corner and it lollops from side to side and it sort of wallows around and pitches and dives whenever you hit a pothole, even more so in this short wheelbase version. But if you've ever driven an old Wrangler or an old Land Rover Defender for that matter, this car feels totally transformed. It feels a lot more fun to drive. It's a lot quicker and eager to turn in. The body control is a lot better. But like I say, if you're not used to a body on frame, old fashioned, roughy tufty kind of four x four, you're probably gonna hate this. But this car isn't designed for your fashion conscious, pumped up hatchback SUV buyers. This car never really feels entirely comfortable on the road. So let's get off road. I've always wanted to say this. Let's off road. It's off the tarmac where the Wrangler really shines. The car buyer off-road track is a walk in the park for it. And in fact, I feel a little embarrassed driving it on here. But I've been lucky enough to drive the Wrangler up an Austrian Alp and on Utah's famous Rubicon Trail. And safe to say, I can't think of any car I'd rely on more. The other thing I love about this car is, it doesn't matter where you drive it, people love you. The people let you out of side turnings, people wave at you, people point and take photographs. You don't get that in a Mercedes G-Class because people tend to hate you. And it's a nice car to drive, nice and comfortable. You get a fantastic view out. You feel very imperious. You feel invincible. It feels absolutely brilliant. You do pay for this ability and heritage, however. Prices start at £40,000 and top out at forty eight grand. Throw in a few options and what you're looking at here is a £50,000 car. Compare this with a Land Rover Discovery Sport, a car that's still very capable off-road, and the Wrangler makes little sense. But the Wrangler isn't one of those cars you buy because it makes sense. You buy it because you want one. And I wouldn't blame you for falling for it. Click on the left for Ginny's review of the five-door Wrangler and on the right for our SUVs playlist. Make sure you press the Car Buy logo to subscribe to the channel and as ever, thanks for watching.